Hi everyone, we're Mike and Trisha, and along with our wee dog Kira, we're on tour in France in our new Swift Carrera 144, exploring the country while finding out what we like about the van and what we don't. In this episode, we're in La roque sur seize one of the most beautiful villages in France, but it seems like there's danger for us at every turn. There's another car coming. Yes, move. Move forward. You ready to go? Today we're at a little place called La Roque sur Seize. Did I get that right? Yes, you did. La Roque sur Seize. And Seize is the name of the little river that runs through this place. And apparently, this is the most beautiful village. In one France. of the most beautiful villages, it says. One of, one of the most beautiful villages in France. So I can't make the claim that it's the most beautiful village in well, France. Well, that's a... It's a matter of opinion. It's yes. something that we're going to find out, isn't it? Yes. What do you think of this little park up? It's, when we arrived, it felt a bit dull, but now it, the sun out, it's gorgeous. Yeah. I think it's a great little spot. It reminds me a little bit of um, some place where you might come to go go-karting. It's like there's a track all the way around. And yeah, I could just see myself on a little go-kart zooming around in here. <laughs> it's been quite quiet, hasn't it? There's maybe been another three or four motorhomes here. One or two of them have left. We're going for a wander now to check out this place and see if it genuinely is the most beautiful little village in France. And there's a little bit of an information board here. So it says, the village of Le Roc sur Seize is classed as the beautiful village in France. Not the most beautiful village. Well, I don't know, Le Plus. Le Plus, but I think it's one of, supposed to be on a list that's one of yes. the most beautiful And it offers exceptional silhouette characteristics. Fantastic. Now, there are on this a list of 13, 13. things to see. Mm -hmm. I think that should be our mission for today, see if we can find and see the 13 things. Yep. There's a nice little restaurant there. I had read reviews um, for the site that said it's one of the things that you should visit. Fantastic. We need to get Google Translate out again to understand <laughs> the menu, won't we? Well, we can understand some of it, yeah. To get to the village of La Roque, we need to cross the River Seize over the Charles Martel Bridge, which was completed in the 16th century. It's traffic light controlled for cars, and for pedestrians there's two balconies where you can get out of the way if a car comes. That proves to be easier said than done. There's Trisha down there. Let's see if she'll give us a wave. Way ahead as usual. Oh dear, a car's coming. <laughs> Run. Keep me fit anyway. I said it'll keep me fit. Right, thanks. He's laughing. Another car coming. Yes, move. Move forward. Right, stand. Stand into no, the side. No, I'm not standing into the side with a dog. Oh. Can wait. Well, he's just going to have to wait. I don't know how you're supposed to know when you can cross. Right. Go in then. Uh, a nice wee wave, friendly wave to you as well. Having received that warm welcome from a friendly French local, we have a quick look back to admire the bridge before heading into the village. Look at that. A real elevated position, isn't it? Well, that's what they said. It's this sort of silhouette of it's it. It's the stuff of fairy tales. The village of La Roque sur Seize clings onto a rocky peak among vineyards and towering above the river Seize and is rightly proud to be among the most beautiful villages in France. The beautiful stone houses of La Roxur says are dressed in Mediterranean vegetation, such as oleanders, Virginia creepers, cypress trees, all of which bring colour to the streets from springtime on. Although the village has medieval origins, it was mostly destroyed by bombardment in World War II, and it's amazing to think that it's been rebuilt to the standard that we're about to see.
we're following a visitor's route where 13 signs point out the places of most interest and we want to find all 13. This is going to be a war memorial. Yeah. First World War. Is this on the list? Yes, it's on the list. It's on the list. We've got a tick in the box. Right, we've seen the bridge and yes. we've seen the monument. <laughs> Le Monument au Mort. Le what? Le Monument au Mort. De Mort? Le, Le Monument au... Right, the, the Monument of the Dead. Yes. Or to the, um, yes. the First World War. Yes. So next on the list... Is L'Eglise, which is the church. It's the church. It's quite a church again for a little village, isn't it? Yeah. It looks huge. When I mean, you think it's only, what, 130 inhabitants it had at the time? Oh, we've reached the church and it's hugely impressive. Oh my goodness me. It's really, really tall. Standing proud of place in this village, I can tell you. I'm not too good at Roman numerals, but I reckon that's 1883. Much smaller on the inside than it looks from the outside, but beautiful all the same. This is a chestnut square, um, but the whole village was bombed in 1944, August, 26 August 1944. And whatever was here is long gone. Yep. Here's something here. Yep, number six. Le lavoir. The French equivalent of the steamy. <laughs> a lot of people will not know what the steamy is. Uh, well, the steamy was where in Glasgow you used to wash your wash clothes, clothes. The old yeah. washing house yeah. for the old washer wives in Glasgow. Yeah. So. Very much a communal space, wasn't it? They yeah. all just got their sleeves rolled up and mucked in. Well, I don't know. You just you reach over and you're like that. And you just... maybe had big paddles. Well, they used to like slap them on this. It was a little channel there, a bit yeah. of a sluice, maybe where the water would drain away. I wonder what these little iron things were for. Well, they must have been hooked onto that, and you could drain the water away. Oh yeah, I can see that. There's a little drain away there. Yeah, so that's to drain the water away. We're flying through this list now. Number seven. It's a fountain, by the looks of things. No, it's just the place. It's the La Place de la See? Mairie. La Place de la Mairie. That's the place. Maybe it's not just the fountain. Maybe it's the place too. It does look like an important place. Oh yeah, look. Trisha, it says something on the building. Ah, this is definitely it. It's Mairie is above the door. There's some balconies and it's a pretty grand looking building. There's some flags. So possibly the town, or rather the village hall. A bit dark here. I think some of the best things are going to be at the top. This is called Impasse de Rampards. I guess this is the Rampards. It's a dead end. Let's go back. Yeah, let's go back. I think this is the way we should have went. It was yeah. nice to see the Rampards though. This looks promising. So we reckon eight was the ramparts. You yes. reckon you've got number nine here? Actually, number eight was the foyer, so we strike out on that one. Yeah, so number nine is Jean Palou. He was a colourful character who arrived in the Second World War okay. and fell in love with the village and then set up a pub or an inn. And this communal square was... The pub. Is it still here? We'll well, I don't pint. know. There is a wee in there, but it's shut. <laughs> Typical, eh? Numero 10. Oui. oui. Le Tour, which is the towers. And they were part of the medieval build at the same time as the bridge. That's a really old photograph there, isn't it? Yeah. And I suppose through these gates, that's what it looks like now. There's a gallery back at the tower too, but unfortunately it's not open at the moment. That's the thing about coming away on holiday to France during February, March. It just means that a lot of places aren't open, but you can still enjoy outside views of everything. Let's face it, there's tons to see here. Another cross here, I can just make out a date on there, 1782. I guess this is number 11 then, La Maison Bleue. Which means? Oh, the Blue House. 
It is. And I think it was someone who won the Nobel Prize for Literature. Yvette Joyce lived here. Oh, yeah. I see that. 1907 to 2000. Mm -hmm. It's got a blue door. Yeah. And blue top. Here's number 12. Now, this is the house of a chap called Armand Cousins, and he lived between 1881 and 1935. He was a famous artist, apparently. Never heard of him, have you? No, I've never heard of him. Are you sure you should be going up there? I don't think we should be going up there. It's very dark. And there's no sign to say it this way. Oh, look. Oh, yeah. This is nice, isn't it? There's a little viewing point here, look. Yep. Wow, what a view. Yeah, it's fantastic. You can see the river says down there. Yep. But some of the trees could do with getting clipped back a bit because it's spoiling the view a little bit, isn't it? <laughs> Don't you think? Let's destroy nature for a view. <laughs> Aye. Did you bring the secretary? <laughs> Got something? Yep, number 13. Le Chateau. Okay. Where is it? I think it's up there, um, but I think it's somebody's residence because you can't, it's private. You can't get in? Yeah. That's a pity. That's the best shot I'm going to get of the chateau and the chapel from here. Good job I've got an eye in the sky. All right, is it just me, or are you hungry as well? Yeah, marvellous. A spot of lunch, so we'll see if we can find somewhere. If not, I know a lovely little cafe called Daphne's. <laughs> Daffers. I it was Daffers. Well, we used to go to Maggie's, didn't we? Yeah. Maggie's Bar and Grill, remember that? That was yeah. great. Careful on this. We've headed back down, and unfortunately, that little cafe was closed, so no joy there. We just had to take our time, because those streets were really quite steep. And actually, on the way down, I realised that I was needing a number two. And that's why we've come back here. Actually, number two is the bridge, so we did get the number two. It's the number one that we didn't get. I think it's further down the river. Number one, we've now got the full set. It's a collection of three mills with water wheels. And there's a picture here of what it would have looked like. I think they're down over there on the river. And the illustration here is actually by Armand Cousins, who is the artist that we saw. Remember we saw the artist? Yeah. The up picture at the house, yeah. up at the house. Yeah, that's him that's done that. That's the best shot that I could get of the mills. There's lots of brambles and everything down there. You can't really get close. So it was the best I could do. We're definitely heading back for lunch now. We made it back to Daffer's. Daphne's. Yep, Daffer's for lunch. For lunch. I'm having ham and mustard sandwiches. What are you having? Tuna wrap. The Yakira, here's some for you. I've only got a tomato on it. <laughs> a tomato. Is that the best you can do? I'm on a diet. <laughs> well, never mind. We're going out for something to eat tonight, aren't we? Yeah, we are. You managed to get it booked up okay? Yes, quarter past seven. Uh, how do you think you're getting on speaking French when we don't <laughs> actually speak French? Uh, I give it a go, so I'll try it and I'll speak to them and I'll say what I need to say and then they'll babble back to me in French and I'm like, parlez anglais, so I feel miserably. And quite often they do speak English, don't they? Yeah, they speak a little bit of English, not a great deal, not as much as I thought people would, but maybe because we're in more sort of rural areas. That afternoon, Kira gets a shower for going out to that restaurant we saw where the food looks too good to eat. But well, somebody has to do it. So we both tuck in and finish off the wine to end a lovely day. We're heading out for the day and we're just going to see the falls of Sotade. That's a series of small waterfalls on the river Seize and apparently they can be quite dangerous because it's quite fast flowing water they are carving their way through the limestone rocks and creating these sharp edged water pools that's what we're going to see so it might be quite dangerous but i don't know if it's going to be as dangerous as having to cross that blooming bridge again 
The Demon Bridge. <laughs> the Bridge of Doom. They're walking fast. <laughs> Can't come in. In here. Cars coming again. Nice friendly waves that time. Well, we made it across the Bridge of Doom. <laughs> and it's this way now to the Cascades. I think it's about 10 minutes along. Yeah, something like that. We're reminded of the dangers of the Cascades along the way. Swimming is banned here, and a banner suspended in the trees tells us there's been 31 deaths since 1960. We're cautious as we head over past a red flag warning. And Kira goes on a lead because we're not taking any chances. The sign says no swimming, which is a shame because we were thinking about skinny dipping to boost our views on YouTube. The Sota de Cascades are a series of waterfalls and rapids with a progressive level of 15 metres located on the course of the River Sez near the commune of La Roque sur Sez. The falls were formed by the erosive action of the river on a limestone rock mass approximately 500 metres wide, uplifted during alpine folding. They consisted of many cavities, most of the time intersecting into potholes, baskets or even large cauldrons. The depth of these can exceed 10 metres. The waterfalls are nicknamed the Devil's Jump on account of the numerous deaths by recklessness which have taken place here for years. Despite the risks, if you're careful, it's an absolutely beautiful place to come and spend the day and many come here to spend the time with their families, having lunch and just admiring the Cascades. We're just heading back to the van now. One last crossing <laughs> of the Bridge of Death. That looked like I've got 20 seconds to get across. 20 seconds. And I wasted three of them or four of them filming that. We're walking past the first balcony and things are looking good, but this is where it can get a little bit risky when you're in between the two balconies. It's where you don't really want to get stuck. You just don't want to see a car coming the other way or behind you. And then you see it. There's something there in the distance. Is he coming? Yeah, he's stopping. He probably sees that boy's filming. I'm not going to get myself into hot water. Eh? There are definitely some times when being a YouTuber and having a camera in your hand can be an advantage. Job done. Right, Kerry, are you ready for this? One bounce and a catch. Go for it. Yay! That's us back at the van. There's a great wee spot here to play with Kira, isn't there? There is, she loves it. But that's the end of this episode, which was fraught with danger, <laughs> wasn't it? We're going to get a reputation, we've got to be known as the Danger Channel. Yes. Don't you think? <laughs> no. No? No, no Danger Mice, maybe. <laughs> uh, aye, well, maybe. That's it for this episode. See you in the next one. Ta da! Bye.